first off, I'm sorry about the quality of this video. It, uh, I am doing this on my laptop with the webcam because I'm not at my house right now. But I had a little bit of free time right there now and I thought that I would try to answer some questions maybe, just a few of a lot. Because uh, currently on YouTube, on my YouTube account, on my inbox, I have uh, 2,567 unread messages. Those are um, personal message, things people have shared with me. I don't even know what people are sharing with me. Uh, comments on videos are a big chunk of them. And uh, contact notifications, people adding me to the contact list. And once again, I don't even know what that means on YouTube. Um, I normally don't have time to read through all this stuff. I mean, like I said, over two, two and a half thousand messages. I get so many because I have so many videos up. But every once in a while when I have some free time, I like to go and just click on a few and read them and try to respond to them. Um, so that's what I'm going to do right now. Um, and let's look at the personal message section. Uh, let's see. Uh, I do get a lot of people asking me just random Linux questions about their hardware and stuff like that. And I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, well, I don't know why you're asking me that in most cases. Um, really, a Linux forum, if I don't have your hardware, I don't know about your hardware. I mean, if you want to send me your computer and uh, or uh, you know another piece of hardware just like yours so I can play around with it, I'll let you know what I come up with. Um, but, I mean, general Linux questions... I mean, feel free to ask, but I'm probably not going to have a chance to answer you because I probably don't know the answer when it comes, especially when it comes to hardware. Um, here's someone saying, "I have a request." It says, uh, "Hi, dude. Uh, Miss the old times when I was learning Bash scripting from your tutorials." So a little jab there from him. Not really sure what he means. He makes it sound like I'm not doing uh, Bash script tutorials anymore, even though I put out a new, uh, some sort of shell script, not necessarily directly Bash related, but my video has never really been specifically on Bash for the most part. Every Monday, new video every Monday. Um, so I'm sorry, dude, if um, for some reason you're missing those videos on Monday, make sure you subscribe and you'll see them. They should pop up in your uh, subscription list every Monday. Um, and I already have four or five hundred uh, videos specifically for shell scripts. If you've watched them all, that's great. I don't know what more you could learn from me. Um, and then also he says, uh, I also remember those times when you uh, asked your subscribers questions on a live chat. I'm assuming he meant video chat because I did that once. That's not something I did regularly. And it is something that I would like to do um, again. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of hard that most of the time when I'm making my videos is with, when my daughter's taking a nap, you know, so it's hard to schedule and make time since I'm working around uh, my work, uh, my duties at home, and uh, my baby. So I'm sorry that I'm not there for doing live video chats for you regularly. Um, I do have an IRC channel that I try to go into regularly. I'm not always there, obviously, but there usually are people there. Um, so... Uh, he says, thanks for all that. He's being kind of sarcastic, I think, in a nice way. Uh, and I'm not trying to be mean back to him. Um, but I do shell script tutorials, basic Linux operating tutorials every Monday. Uh, um, keep an eye out for those. Uh, if you're not liking what I'm doing now, you're probably not going to like the ones coming up in the near future because I am going to do a series for at least a couple of weeks on... Uh, the on Android and its shell uh, using BusyBox and other commands on Android because Android is Linux and uh, you can make it do everything that you can do with a regular Linux system if you know how to do it and I'm just going to show you some basics of that but I know a lot of people are going to like it a lot of people are going to go oh Android uh, and I'm sorry I try to learn as much about everything uh, I want to sit down at any computer and know what I'm doing and it's not that hard if you just spend a little time learning things, especially if you're a programmer. If you know how to program, uh, you know how to program. It doesn't matter what operating system you're on. Uh, so that's what I'm, I, I try to teach is uh, compatibility uh, with software and that's why uh, free and open source software is so important because it does in most cases give you that strength to not be limited to uh, one scenario. Um, so let's go down a little bit more a few people asking me about Pulse Audio. I'm just seeing that. I'm not even going to click on those. Uh, one here says uh, OCR, Optical Character Recognition. I've done tutorials on that. 
uh, he asked, uh, could you make a Twitter RSVP bot since you know how to use the OCR program? I do not know what a Twitter RSVP uh, bot is. Uh, and as far as me knowing how to use the OCR program, I do have uh, video tutorials on that. We'll watch the video for a few minutes and you'll know how to use it as well. And then you could make that program. I do get a lot of those people asking me to write software for them. Um, I, I don't work in the computer field uh, for a reason. Uh, I like writing software for fun, um, accomplishing tasks that I need to, to accomplish. Uh, my videos aren't there so I can get a job with you. My videos are out there so I can teach you how to do things for yourself because uh, we should be a community, uh, the open source community, and we should help each other, which is what I try to do with my videos uh, in helping you. Um, but I'm not going to do everything for you and uh, you shouldn't want people to do everything for you. You should strive to learn more. Um, Let's scroll down more, see if any of these other titles sound interesting. Someone's saying, I can't see your HTML5 Canvas videos. I think I already did a video on that explaining that they're coming soon. Uh, working very hard on that. Uh, I'm, once again, I, I, I keep saying this, I'm very excited about HTML5 uh, and what it offers us. and. Um, and again, uh, I think kind of like that first person who likes my Bash script, and I will always do some sort of shell script tutorials regularly. Um, uh, I love HTML5, uh, and I love learning new languages. I've been learning a lot with JavaScript over the last year. Um, and uh, for me, when it comes to software, when you're writing software, when you're a developer, like the number one goal, your number one goal should be compatibility. And that means a lot of things it should be compatible with uh, different types of hardware as well as operating systems. And right now, the easiest way to make a uh, usable user interface, a GUI interface um, that works on all devices is HTML5. Um, I also get a lot of questions about uh, Pygame and uh, Qt and uh, GTK and that sort of stuff. And although I think all those are great, that's not my main focus now. Because although things like um, Pygame uh, and Qt5, uh, I believe, uh, all will run on Android devices, Windows devices, uh, Mac OS, I'm not sure about the iPhone. I think Qt5 does run on iPhone from what I've seen. Um, but HTML5 is already there on most of those. Obviously, HTML5 is still being developed. It's not done, so there are some things that are in a state of flux, but you can easily search and see what is compatible across browsers. And most things that aren't compatible, uh, a lot of those features you can implement with JavaScript and make them compatible. They don't, they aren't, they're now rendered, you know, with the JavaScript rather than uh, with the HTML through the browser, so supposedly it's not as efficient, but can be done. Um, and that's why I, my main focus is on that, because one, I find HTML um, lots, a lot more customizable for the end user. I can write a plugin for um, Chrome or for uh, Firefox that will take a page, whatever page it is, and I can manipulate it as the end user uh, with that, or I can just manipulate you know, the HTML itself, but with a plugin I can change it for my viewing and set up how I like. And I think that is great for the freedom of the end user. Yeah, I can look at your code and change it around, uh, you know, with, with QT and stuff. If you're hopefully making your software open source, it's just HTML since it's plain text, uh, which I, I love things that are plain text. I know there's certain scenarios where it's not efficient enough, uh, but whenever possible, I like plain text stuff because text can always be manipulated and reformatted however you want as the end user. But also just the fact that on most systems, you don't have to install anything special. As long as you have an up-to-date browser, these things, uh, HTML5, JavaScript, and CSS are all right there for making your GUI interface. A lot of programming can be done um, with JavaScript, there's really not a whole lot that can't be done. Obviously, if you're crunching big numbers, JavaScript isn't the way you want to go. But I'm talking about writing software for end users, the average software you know, interface for accomplishing tasks. Um, it, it's already there. There's nothing special you need to install. And if you have a, a web server, uh, obviously that stuff runs on the client side, either through a browser or some other 
portal or wrapper, um, and it can run right on their system. No need for a web server, but if you have a web server, you can write the back end in any language you want. And again, I, I, I urge people to to if you're not if you're iffy about how you feel about HTML, just think of it as a very flexible GUI interface uh, for whatever language you want. I mean, that's what it is. Uh, and I, I know people are going to disagree with me, but that's where I'm heading with a lot of my tutorials. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. I'm not going to change where I'm going because you want me to go back to stuff I've already done, I already know how to do, I need to learn new stuff. I constantly like learning new stuff. I tell you, two years from now, I may start using something else for GUI interfaces. I might start moving away from HTML5, because so I'm going to go with whatever I think is the best at the time, and right now, I think that's the best. Uh, and I feel like a broken record, because I keep saying that in all my videos, but I keep getting messages uh, you know, with people who want me to do other stuff. Um, which is fine. I love suggestions, but I just want you to understand that. Looking through here, uh, people asking me questions. There's so many questions. I'm just looking for interesting topics. I'm gonna. I want to answer one more question before I uh, move on, uh, or before I finish this video. Okay. Uh, a lot of Python. I love Python, it's just not in what I'm working on now. Um, uh, learn. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll probably cut out some of this. Uh, questions about Pi Game. A lot of people ask me if I want to partner with them. Let me read through this. I currently on a shell of a circuit recruiter. I guess if I was looking for a job, I would appreciate those if, I don't know if they're scams or not. People are constantly asking me to get involved in software projects with them. Um, more Python questions. Yes, I, you know, I, I guess people really like my Python videos. I just, you know, again, not my goal here. Okay, here's one that just says, hey there. Uh, I see like special effects in films just like me. I've been doing special effects for four years now. Could you please visit my channel? Tell me if you think I'm good or not. Uh, lots of times when you see those, they're just people trying to get views on their videos, but I'll probably have a look at that later on. Another one titled, Hey Chris is the subject. Hey Chris, and they spelled my name right, which is nice because even some of my friends don't. But hey Chris, I know you get a lot of message daily. Mm, that's true. Uh, but I just wanted to personally thank you for... Oh, this is, sounds like a nice one so far. <laughs> Not someone yelling at me that they don't like the videos I'm doing now. Um, thank you for, a lot for all your very helpful videos and knowledge. Share any, everyone here on YouTube and all over. It really has helped and definitely makes learning a lot more fun. Been a Linux user since 2007. Yeah, I think I've been since 2005, so almost as long as I have, about the same, and uh, been the best thing I've ever used. Good. Uh, been a subscriber of yours uh, for about two years or so now, um, and you've provided nothing but good videos and information. Just wanted to thank you and keep up the great work. That's uh, Linux user 54. Uh, uh, thank you. I uh, got that message about six months ago. I apologize for the late response. Um, uh, but uh, that, I think it's a good uh, uh, message to end on because someone happy and liking what I'm doing and not complaining about the videos I'm doing. And uh, I know, I know, I'm sure most of my viewers enjoy my videos. That's why they watch and subscribe. Uh, and I hope that most of you do uh, enjoy them. And uh, I just know people are, people are just more vocal when they're unhappy or unsatisfied. And I apologize for that. And uh, I try not to sound like a jerk, and I'm sure that you guys, for the most part, don't mean, or you know, you're not trying to sound like jerks in your videos. Like that first one, he was, he was giving it kind of sense of humor with the whole, uh, I miss the good old days when I used to learn Bash videos from you. Again, I don't know uh, why he's not seeing the ones I'm posting, and I know that a lot of them are more command line tools, not Bash directly, but my videos have always been like that. Um, but I, I don't know if I could pump out more than three videos a week. Actually, I might be pumping out more than three videos a week because there's so much I want to teach you guys. Uh, again, I do um, mainly shell stuff, but Linux, 
operating system stuff on Monday. I'll probably be doing some stuff on the Android command line, mostly BusyBox stuff, but other tools on Android uh, for a couple of weeks coming soon. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people unhappy with that. I think I just uh, finished uh, the series on packaging software for different operating systems. Um, and I was worried that a lot of people would not like those because like three of them focused on Windows. Um, but I think it's important that we, uh, as computer users, you know, advanced users or whatever you want to call us, uh, are able to understand, you know, uh, how to use other operating systems uh, fluently. Um, and as developers, we should be able to package our software. Again, if you're using HTML and you have a web server, you can just send it to them through a web browser. But in that series, I hope I showed you a bunch of useful ways, at least like five different ways of packaging your applications for different operating systems, both HTML and also just standalone applications, depending. And I showed you some that are cross-platform, uh, other ones that are operating spe system-specific. Um, so that's the series I just ended. So anyway, operating system stuff on Mondays, Linux operating system stuff, videos like this where I talk to the camera on Wednesdays, try to answer questions or just do random stuff that I think is fun. I think I might do some software reviews, uh, which I haven't really done in the past, but uh, just, you know, quick, hey, let you know there's this open source, source program, uh, most likely in your package manager. You may not know it's there and it does this, you know, so. I might do a few of those in the near future on Wednesdays. Uh, and Fridays right now uh, have been kind of just programming in other languages other than Shell. Uh, lots of it focusing on um, packaging lately uh, and a little bit on HTML5. We are going to be getting into a lot of Canvas stuff. HTML5 Canvas, um, drawing pictures, drawing shapes, animating stuff. We'll get into some 3D stuff a little bit further down the road. I've been working on um, playing around with scripts to uh, capture pictures from your webcam or videos from your webcam, uh, doing face detection, superimposing stuff over your face. There's a lot of open source scripts out there. I've been playing around, simplifying them to make tutorials for you. So a lot of that coming up on Fridays and it's going to be months months of, of HTML5, just the canvas alone. Um, and, and like I said, uh, getting into 3D stuff. Uh, those of you who like my Pi game tutorials, I think you're going to like my canvas tutorials once we get into it, doing both 2D stuff with physics and doing 3D stuff, um, first person, you know, type stuff, other stuff, just 3D stuff, looking at open source tools because there's so many out there for the canvas. And even though you can install Pygame on uh, Android, a lot of this canvas stuff already works in the browser, uh, or you can make an APK for Android uh, or you know, I, I, iOS, and, and the great thing once again about these is uh, for the most part they will run on all operating systems, whether you package it as a standalone application or you do it through the web browser. A lot of the 3D stuff is a little bit in flux now. Some of it's more compatible with mobile devices than others. The more advanced stuff using hardware acceleration right now um, doesn't run on all devices uh, using uh, WebGL, uh, using the Canvas uh, is more compatible, but sometimes a little bit slower, but hopefully we'll see more of that being integrated. It seems like most browsers are planning on it. Um, so we'll be able to make games and just have it run on all devices, uh, either making a package to install it or just doing it through the web browser, uh, depending on what you're looking for with your application. I really think that if you give it a chance, you'll like it, all you Pi game people. And maybe I'll start getting more questions on that rather than Pi game once we get to it. But it's going to take us a while to get there. Lots of videos. And again, I mentioned recently that I really want to do Blender tutorials again, not necessarily at first designing stuff, but just the interface, because there's so many aspects of it that I think people don't know about. So I'm waiting a little bit longer because we're right at the end of Blender 2.x uh, and we're going to be getting into the next version. Uh, so what are we at? We're at uh, Blender 2.6 right now. 
and then so 2.7, 2.8 going to be coming out soon. Kind of waiting for that in case there's any big changes before I start doing these videos. So if I do start doing those, I might add those like on a Thursday. Um, and just very detailed going through, okay, this is this toolbar. These are all the options and this is how it works. Okay, this is this toolbar this week. You know, uh, not necessarily design stuff because there's a lot of great people out there who are great 3D designers. Uh, Adam, Pri uh, Adam Price, Andrew Price over at Blender Guru, way, way more advanced and, and than I will ever be. His videos are kind of long. Um, but that's because he goes into so much detail on the artistic side of it, which is not my side of it, you know? Um, so I really want to get more into the technical part of it, just showing you these are where the tools are. This is how you do this. This is how you create a new separate window. This is how you resize, just going through every little bit of it. So that's what those videos will be on first. And then after that, if I have the time, once again, this all depends on whether me having the time and, I, and my life is pretty busy, um, I'm, as all of ours are. Uh, in fact, I don't know if I mentioned it, I'm actually on my lunch break at work right now. I'm not even, you know, I'm not at home, that's why I'm doing this here, because I had a chance here on my lunch break at work to record this, so I'm doing it because I wanted to get this video out to you. So I'm really squeezing stuff in for you guys. Um, just so much, so much I want to teach you guys, and I do hope that you all appreciate the stuff I have coming up. Uh, and, and you know what, even if you don't, I'm learning a lot. I really, really do feel that I learn so much more making these videos for you. Example, the, th the a lot of the canvas stuff I'm learning, um, the 3D stuff, and it's like you see these scripts out there uh, that do basic stuff, and then the scripts are like this long, and it's like, oh, there's so much to go through. Well, what I've been working on is I'm going through them and picking out the minimal parts you need. Um, and you'll see that in these tutorials. And that's what I try to do with all my tutorials. Like, like I was looking at a tutorial and some sample code on um, <clears throat> grabbing video from the webcam through HTML5, streaming it live uh, to your screen, and putting the image into a canvas, doing the face detection, and superimposing something over it. There's great code out there for that. And it has a whole lot of error detection in it which is important if you're making something that you're going to mass produce and send out there you want you know if this goes wrong do this if this goes wrong do that but when you're learning you you don't need all that you just want I, I want the bare minimum grab my face superimpose something over my face uh, and 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 that's it so I'm going through these codes throughout there and removing all the stuff that should be in there but isn't essential and so I'm simplifying it cutting down the lines of code, and then I'm going to record tutorials on those, and then point you to the full code by whoever I got that from, so you can see all that extra stuff, but I think the, the minimal code will help you learn. It's helping me learn, because I'm going through there going, well, I don't think this line's needed. Delete. Did it work? Oh, no, it didn't. Put that line back in. Let's see. Do I need this line in here? Delete. No, it didn't. Oh, I wonder what that line did, and I look at what that line did, and, or why this one didn't work, and so I'm learning a lot, and so... I always try to simplify things uh, in the tutorials, uh, and now I've been talking for, I don't have a watch on, but I looked anyway, um, talking for a while now, uh, and I do try to keep the length of my videos down. I hope you didn't bore you too much, hope I answered some questions, and I really hope that you guys are looking forward to the videos that I have coming up. I will always do some shorter shell script tutorials regularly. And right now, those are Mondays. I just want to make that clear. Um, and I, and for those of you who are eager for more, I hope you did watch all four or five hundred uh, shell script videos I have out there already. Uh, good for you if you did. Um, <clears throat> and that, that's it. Anyway, I thank you for watching. I hope that you have a great day. Please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Where's my camera program here? And um, I've been recording for. 24 minutes. Great. Okay. Uh, have a great day. Visit my site. Link in the description. Bye. Have a great day. It is July 25th, 2013. Ember's going to show us all her tricks. Yep, that's her O face, her silly face. Do your silly face. <laughs> that's it. Do it again. Do a silly face. The camera's distracting. Oh, there's the O face. Okay.
Now clap, clap Ember. I can't do it because I'm holding the camera. There you go, clap. And um, wave. Hello, hello. And lastly, let's see if you can do this one. It's the newest one. How big is Ember? So big.